Hi everybody, my name is Caroline. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about my 3D printer cabinet. Now, this is a brand new addition that I just put together and I'm gonna show you a few of the steps that I went through. I don't have a whole step-by-step -step video, but I will give you all of the links below so that you can do this for yourself. Let's get started. I'm gonna back it up here for just one second. I started my 3D printer journey about a year ago. This is the first 3D printer. It's an Anet A8 that I ever purchased. I do have a video of myself putting this together. It took me about six hours to put this together. So technically I didn't buy a 3D printer, I bought a kit for a 3D printer. Worked really great for me and I've done a few upgrades to it. So th there's a video called Mods and Things, which is the first set of modifications I did to this printer. I just released a updated OctoPi printer where I'm controlling the print jobs with a Raspberry Pi. And most recently I have now uh, purchased a cabinet for my 3D printer. I did a ton of research before I bought this cabinet for my 3D printer. Number one, I wanna give a shout out to Chris Riley's channel. You did an amazing job on doing a 3D printer enclosure video. I watched your video, it was top notch. I will link to that below because I just thought that was such a good video. So it was a video where he put together two or three lac tables from the Ikea store. He made a, a printer enclosure from end tables from the Ikea store. I started just going down that path. As I was going down that path, I'm looking on Thingiverse, I was looking at different uh, cameras. I realized I could use a Stuva cabinet from the Ikea store as my printer cabinet. This particular one is the correct size for an ANET A8. Here was the challenge. I, I decided I wanted to go down the Stuva cabinet route, except I live in the US and they don't sell this particular cabinet in the US with this depth. This one is 60 centimeters deep on the inside. That's the dimension, which is just, just barely wide enough for the uh, Y axis on this printer to swing uh, forward and back. So I went on eBay and I purchased this cabinet from an eBay seller in the UK, shipped it to me. It was, I think $60 to ship a $40 cabinet uh, through eBay. Total cost for just the cabinet itself was over $100. This door I could purchase from my Ikea store down the street, my local Ikea store, and then the hinges on the inside I could also purchase from my local Ikea store. It was quite an amazing journey, waiting for my cabinet to arrive from the UK and then purchasing a door. Now, I hope you'll notice this. When I open and close the door, I hope you notice that uh, it is louder with the door open. That is one of the reasons I wanted to build a cabinet for my 3D printer was to reduce the amount of noise. Now, I don't have a basement like most people. I live in a smaller home. I do 3D print in my office and then I'm trying to get some work done and I don't want to uh, listen to the noise all day. It is significantly uh, quieter in this cabinet. Putting the cabinet together was pretty easy. I like putting together IKEA furniture. I think it's fun. I had no issues with that. So we, we were able to put together this cabinet in just a few minutes. It was a lot quicker than I thought it was gonna be. The next challenge though was the cables. You're printing something inside of it, so you need power. I did have to cut out three holes into my brand new cabinet. One is in the bottom right hand corner, one is in the top right hand corner, and one is on here on the left side. Bottom left hand corner, these are one inch holes each. I just put the power cables through that hole in the back corner for the printer itself. Then the hole that I cut in the top right hand corner is for the light. As you notice, it is quite well lit. Let me turn it off here for a second so you'll see what it looks like with it off. It's, a, it's quite a bit darker with this off. Turn that back on again. I do have a four foot string of LED lights that I stuck to the ceiling. And then I've got a hole right here. There is a Raspberry Pi camera and printed the enclosure. I'll link to all of this below the video. And then I had to print a case that had holes so I could attach it to the outside of the wall of my cabin. My, I've got my Raspberry Pi 3B. I've got the webcam. I also have uh, my toolkit right here. I was able to 3D print this little caddy for my tools. The other thing I like Chris Riley's uh, video was that he attached a smoke detector to the top. I wanted to do something a little bit different. I didn't want to attach a smoke detector uh, to the inside of my cabinet. So what I did is I used a Sonoff temperature sensor and I will link to that video below. A few months ago, I purchased a Sonoff temperature sensor and I hooked it up to IFTTT. And so if this catches on fire, it'll automatically turn off my 3D printer through IFT, uh, assuming the internet's still working. At that point, I do 
monitor the temperature inside the printer. That was one of the concerns about putting my printer into a cabinet is it's pretty warm in there, quite frankly, but that's also part of the timing of which I decided to do this project. You're not supposed to put your 3D printer right next to the window and mine is right next to the window just because I just don't have any other space uh, in my little home for my 3D printer. And I did have a lot of issues in the winter time when it got super, super cold uh, keeping the prints sticking to the bed in very cold weather. I did not have that problem at all this summer. That is the latest update on my 3D printing adventures. I still love 3D printing. I've learned so much. I've been able to use my CAD skills using Tinkercad to design my own items. It's just been a great journey. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.